And now, your host, Jimmy Roberts. And hi again, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us once more here on In Play. We begin tonight with the profile of a golf professional, but he's one you've probably never seen hit a golf shot. He's got a hard and mostly thankless job, which involves hundreds of days of travel every year, and the pay is zero. And even though the position is one of influence and importance, it's mostly an anonymous one as well, or at least it was until recently. Here's Matt Janella. It's just after dawn at the Legends Golf Club, 20 minutes outside of Indianapolis, and Ted Bishop starts another day on the job. I spell your first name. Very good. I will see you at 1118 for three players. That happens a lot. You open the door, the phone starts ringing. <laughs> As owner-operator for 20-plus years at his family-run golf facility, which features 45 holes, he's no stranger to long hours. This was just a 390-acre cornfield. The tree that you see over there by the 18th green, that was the only tree when we built the place. I put that same swing on it, strengthen that grip up a little bit. I'm a 24-7 guy at my, at my facility, uh, seven days a week. Uh, I mean, that's the way it was before I did the, the PGA thing. The PGA thing? That's Bishop's understated way of explaining what he does outside of his day job. You see, he's president of the PGA of America, and when he was elected to that position in 2012... Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. It added to his already demanding set of responsibilities, some of which could be described as ceremonial. Awarding the trophy at golf's final major, throwing out the first pitch at a Major League Baseball game, discussing business on the sidelines of his beloved Indianapolis Colts. I'd like to take this opportunity to officially welcome everybody. And welcoming thousands to the annual PGA Merchandise Show. What can the PGA of America do for you? Nothing. You just guys just keep doing what you're doing. It's great I to see. I appreciate it. Ted Bishop is anything but ceremonial. And what he's been doing is not only leading the PGA of America, but doing it in a way that perhaps none of his predecessors ever have. Not content to just hand out trophies, he has elbowed his way into conversations where he feels the organization has a vested interest. He is a blunt and unapologetic advocate, as was the case with the proposed ban on the anchored putting stroke. I don't think that anyone could have imagined that it would blossom into the controversy that it did. Bishop very vocally let everyone who would listen know that the PGA of America was against the USGA and RNA's ban on anchoring. Over the past few months, there's kind of been a little bit of a groundswell uh, from within the ranks. After we made our announcement, people were probably looking at me and they were saying, you know, who's this guy? Nobody's come out and been critical of another allied association. This is, you know, it's not the proper etiquette. It's groundbreaking. The PGA of America lost the argument and accepted the decision to implement the rule in 2016. But Bishop and his organization made a bold statement and the golf world noticed. We never felt through that whole thing that the PGA of America was doing it for any other reason is they felt strongly about this issue. They were concerned about how it would affect the game. And, you know, for that, I think we have a lot of respect for them. It took some uh, courage from him and the PGA of America to stand up and say what they believed. And, you know, I think they should be proud. They, they did what they thought was right. Ted Bishop's tenure at the PGA of America as president has been extremely important and perhaps transform the importance of the position. He's the president of a major golf organization in the world of golf, but he thinks in terms of golf in the context of an individual player. Tim Fincham said he's learned from you your passion for collaboration. If you ask me what, what was, was probably the greatest accomplishment in, in my time as president of the PGA of America, I would say it's the relationship that we formed with the PGA Tour. It's time that we all started working together, you know, on, on a lot of things in golf to try to improve the overall state of the game. Bishop collaborated to bring a PGA Championship to TPC Harding Park, the course in San Francisco managed by the PGA Tour, and also worked to create a retooled major for the LPGA Tour. Despite this collaboration, Bishop's been called a maverick for his outspoken stances and a rabble rouser for going against the grain. He made headlines after calling out the RNA for doing nothing to help women obtain memberships into clubs that host open championships. 
He challenged his organization to break from its typical selection process and chose Tom Watson as the captain of the U.S. Ryder Cup team. He partnered with the polarizing Donald Trump, awarding him his first men's major championship in 2022. Each decision had its critics, and some took offense to Bishop's style. Ted Bishop, this guy's the biggest activist PGA president in the history of the PGA presidency, I would think. Uh, He's annoyed a lot of people along the way, and he's inspired a lot of people along the way. And uh, I don't think we'll ever see another PGA president like this guy because he was really willing to put his neck on the line. I'm not really somebody by nature that likes conflict. Now, I'm I'm not afraid of it, no matter what people might think. I've always tried to keep the big picture in in, in play. How you doing, sir? Part of Bishop's larger vision includes increasing the amount of participants in golf. His global perspective on the issue is also affected by an intensely personal one as the owner of a golf course that once was on the brink. Okay, there you go, John. Thanks. We opened in 1993. We were turning away 5,000 players uh, a year, and we made the, the decision to build nine more championship holes, to build an 18-hole par three course, and in doing so, we overextended ourselves. We had to file Chapter 11. It was a very painful time. There was no question about it. Do you think you would be as effective of of a president without that point in your career? I've had a lot of PGA members that have said, we're running into some of the same potential issues that that you did. And I think that it gives me credibility. Emerging from bankruptcy led Bishop to listen to some new ideas. He now gives his customers an option to pay for golf by the minute instead of by nine or 18 holes. He formed a PGA task force to look at non-traditional ways to grow the game, including alternative golf, an example of which is foot golf, which Bishop now offers at his facility. As operators, we get criticized by the golf traditionalists who look at something like foot golf and they say, well, you're just doing that, you know, for the revenue. Well, why wouldn't I do that? I could remember the quote that Curtis Strange had, and he's like, you know, these things will never work. I laminated this article, and it sits on my desk. Curtis Strange, to a degree, motivates me every day with that comment. And I'm a great test case. When I put some of these new and innovative ideas into my facility, it's good, because I hear the negative, I hear the positive. One question begs answering. If Ted Bishop, with all of his resources and relationships, can't make public golf in America work, then who can? As he's in the final months of his presidency, Bishop's full-time role as director of golf back in Franklin is waiting. And for his family, he can't get back home fast enough. I think he'll be back at our place and he'll have more ideas and bigger ideas and, you know, and want to start working on some of those things because right now, he just doesn't have the time. When he's been gone all week and things are in shambles around here, I'll say, you might be Mr. President to everyone else, but I need you to go take the trash out. (laughs) 